Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Do you know why I do archery? Because it's pussy on a stick. Let's break down what it is. One lone maverick firing his tan shaft at an alarming speed towards a small hole, often a distance. To me, that's the mechanics of sex. It's a classic case of hunter and hunted. I am master of all I survey, and all I like to survey are a couple of walloping boobies slash jugs, i.e. tits. That's a target I certainly don't mind taking a couple of pot shots at with my twanging rod of plenty, a.k.a. the general. Girls like nothing more than to see me bend my back and release a shower of love. One Sheila couldn't help herself, 69 me over there behind one of the hay bales. I'm like the Robin Hood of romance. Rich or poor, all the girls are gagging for my arrow. Get arching, get laid, go figure. Morning, sir. Cut the small talk. Sorry, sir. What are your instructions? I want you to give this to the Russians. What the hell are you doing? Concealing it for transport, sir. God, man, they're only over there. <sighs> no, leave it! Leave it! They won't want it now. <laughs> and the way they want to have sex when they're really pissed. pissed. Yeah. And you just know, they're not going to get it up. <laughs> and they want to try again an hour later and it's like, I'm sorry, the judges have gone home. <laughs> Do you find Tom doesn't like you drinking pints in front of his mates? Yeah, for some reason he always wants me to drink whiskey. Oh, whiskey, yeah, but not neat. Yeah. Oh no, no, whiskey and soda. And <laughs> Seriously though, you're so touchy. I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm not. Touchy! Shut it. Touchy pants. Look, I'm warning you. Look, I'm warning you. Touchy. Oi, 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 Good of you to see us, Mr. Titchmarsh. I'm gonna take a back seat here and let these guys do the talking. Well, Alan, what it is... Al! He likes to be called Al. Right. It's a new science fiction sitcom called Space Bar. You play Stuart Barr, who runs this wacky pub in space and also does a lot of typing on this magic keyboard. And when you press the space bar on the magic keyboard, you die. No, you get transported to another dimension where every week there's a garden that needs some gardening. Done. One of the other ones. Tell her one of the other ones. OK, Quick on the Draw, where Percy Quick presents a history of bedroom furniture. And the furniture's so mouldy that it needs some gardening doing to it. Guys, Alan Titchmarsh doesn't garden drawers, he gardens gardens. Sorry about that, Al. OK, it's a British film called Stop to Regroup Your Thoughts about this 80s pop band called The Thoughts and what they were doing before they had to stop to regroup. You play the lead singer, Gary Stop. And what they were doing before they had to stop to regroup was some gardening. Open on you, Gary Stop, with a big trowel. Wait, before you carry on, what do you think? What do you think to these ideas? 
There are my guys! Well, it looks like you just about screwed my life to hell. Let's get out of here before he shows the monster within. Don't worry, guys. I got a 3.30 with Gavin Esler. Come on! Come on! Not worth it! Come on! Touchy! Come on! Get off me! And when they get you to act out their little fantasies. <laughs> like when they get you to pretend to be a stretch child. <laughs> Touchy. Shut it! Oh, yeah, 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 don't be stupid, don't be stupid, don't be stupid, really. Not in the car. Watch it and welcome to a specially brief edition of A-Level Fun Signs. That's right, because this week we're going to be telling you literally everything you need to know to get an A at A-Level General Studies. And if you're studying A-Level General Studies, you might be wondering what books to read for your subjects. Well, the answer is any book or none at all will do. So don't panic. Really? We mean it this time. Don't panic. Another important thing to remember is not to take A-Level General Studies if you have anything better to do with your time. And this includes drinking or masturbating. That's right. Most universities will be more impressed with the results of a twang off the wrist than with an A-Level General Studies certificate. So, let's recap on the facts you'll need to get you through A-Level General Studies. Fact one, don't panic. Fact two, bollocks to it. It don't matter. And remember, there is no third fact. Right, so how can we use those facts to answer a typical A-level general studies exam question? Write a 100-page story under the title, My Big Day Out. But how can we use what we've learned to answer that question? Well, best not bother. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you, dear. Although, I was wondering if you could do me a little favour. Oh, God, yes, tea. Sorry, I forgot. No, it's... Biscuit? Oh, actually, that would be... But what I really want... Oh, God, shall I write a list? No, I need... You've just been to the toilet. No, but what I want after the tea and biscuits and cake, but what I really want... Oh, I know how Mummy felt now. You did once say that when I was old and infirm, you'd kill me. And what with your mother gone and the dog dead, I thought now might be as good a time as any. Uh, Dad, I think you said old, infirm and a vegetable. I do dribble. That's not enough. I can't remember things. Who are you? Where's the ring road? I'm bamboozled. <laughs> You can't fool me. You're not mad. You're just silly. What happened yesterday? No. Oh, go on. Kill me. It'll be ever so quick. You've got a year left at most. Why can't you just wait like everyone else? I'm fed up. I've had enough. And you did promise. I thought it'd be turning a switch. I didn't think I'd have to stab you. Go on. I'll get into trouble. We'll make it look like an accident. I couldn't do it. I haven't got the technical know-how. You could hire a hitman. Dad, we live in Bath, the heart of Avon. There are no hitmen. Go up to London. You could make a connection. I know a guy who knows a guy in Kilburn. Does he pack a piece? Couple of sawn-offs. He'd whack me, no problem. I can afford it. I've got the moolah. Dad, that is my inheritance. You are not frittering it away on a madman in Kilburn. Dad. So I'll just get you the tea. No chance of a dash of bleach in it, I suppose? No! Rob's always going on about his ex-girlfriend and saying how amazing it was and that, you know, they had to split up, but, you know, it was for the best, but, you know, they're still really close. close yeah. Yeah. And you're always thinking, so was she better in bed? Than me, me, yeah. And then they say how much you would have liked her mm. and that you're so similar. similar. Mm. And next thing you know, they're asking you to meet Sleep her. with her. It's 
Steve. Hi. Uh, the Nicholson report's getting more and more urgent, I'm afraid, because we've got to get the presentation together by the end of the week. You are on top of it. Yep. Tony, what if I were to tell you that last night my house burnt down and four members of my family were killed? What, Steve? Yeah, what? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, what if? Uh, so it hasn't? No. Hang on, Tony. I haven't told you anything yet. But if I told you that, then judging by your reaction just then, you'd probably believe me, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, yeah, if it was true. Yeah, look, come on, Tony. You don't know what's true. I'm just asking if you believe me. Well... Because the alternative is, you'd be calling me a liar at a very traumatic point in my life. Right. Uh, put like that, of course, I'd believe you. Right. Where would you stand, then, on the urgency of the Nicholson report? That would put it in some kind of perspective, wouldn't it? Well, it would still be urgent, but... Uh, Steve, you're trying to sell me something. No, hang on. So, let's say, house gutted, four dead relations, Nicholson report fading into the background. How many weeks could I have off? Well, I don't know, Steve. It's so extreme. Uh, but I suppose, you know, in that instance, you could have off as long as you wanted. As long as I wanted? Yeah. What, paid? Of course paid. It's in your contract. Right. Tony, last night my house burnt down and four members of my family were killed. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's awful, isn't it? I've seen about two years. I'll have a large one. No, make it huge. No, actually, you better make it extra huge. Hold on a moment. Oh, pull on! Oh, look, it's the uh, last day of the Modern Masters at the Royal Academy. Ah. Do, you, um, do you like modern art, too? Sure, sure, I like painting. Any school in particular? School? Uh, oh, I like lots of schools. I like um, Impressionism and Naturism and uh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh, the man who cut off his ear. Cut it right off like that. Anything more modern? Yeah, right off, just like that. A modern, modern art? You know, like Cubism? Or Pollock? Oh, him! Jansen Pollock! Yeah, I know him. What a character. I mean, this guy, OK. He takes a bucket of paint, he throws it on a canvas, smears it around a bit, and he makes $2.2 .2 million for throwing some paint on a canvas. Two. Two point two. <laughs> I mean, the guy's a genius. I mean, look at his use of colours and the fusion and the reds and the blues and the movement and the form. It's the fusion of movement and form and colours, and for that, you've got to pay. Of course you do, for the funny-looking woman. With a body all over the place, like she's been in a grinder and some dead fish with its bones all showing hanging on a tree. I mean, boy, do I love dead fish with its bones all showing hanging on a tree. And fusion and movement and colour and form and some guy with his nose all to one side like a boxer and two big eyes staring at you like black holes and, uh, and, um... A big watch! That's it! A big watch flapping about like a pancake. Boy, would I love a picture of a big pancake watch. If I had $2.2 .2 million, this is the first thing I would buy. I mean, this, to me, this is art. It's genius. Oh, look, Holiday on Ice is in town. Hello there. I'm just about to enjoy this week's Outdoor We with Dame Julie Dacre, Oscar nominee and currently starring in Anthony and Cleopatra at the RSC. Dame Julie, hi. Hi there. Now, before we begin, I must just ask you, are the rumours true? <laughs> My God, yes. Well, glad to have got that out in the open before we begin. After you. Tina loved the assembly. Really? Thanks, Chris. You know, the autumn assembly comes but once a year, but every year you seem to raise the stakes. How did you come out with that display? <laughs> Best assembly yet, Tina. Really? Yep, totally blown away. It made my talk about water boatmen seem almost redundant. Oh, Nigel, that'll always be relevant. I know. If you don't teach kids about pond skaters now, when are they going to learn? But seriously, awesome assembly, mean it. I don't know what you've got planned for the next assembly. My heart is currently set on the colour red, but I'd certainly like to discuss it with you. Perhaps over coffee. Tina! Doug Povey, visiting head from St Mary's Junior, came in on the request of your head to discuss toilet sanitation in the main block and have come away with a vision of how autumn should be presented and made relevant to under eights. Loved the conquer joke, first class. Keeping my eye on you.
Breaking up the leaves in one, two, and three. Breaking up the leaves in one, two, and three. Hi, Mum. It went really well. All I need now is a boyfriend. No, but there again, this film isn't about swimming pools or cocktail parties. Mm. It's about ordinary life with all of its joy and pain. And where I've succeeded, I think, is due to my wonderful cast, Jim Broadbent, uh, Joan Plowright... Didn't Ted Danson do a marvellous cameo? No, but the performances of the whole oh, well. cast... So, Ron, what brings you to Tinseltown? A wish upon a star? Uh, well... It'll make your dreams come true. Uh, no, I came for the Oscars because, as you may know, we picked up a couple of nominations. One for Best Supporting Actress, one for Best Screenplay. You didn't win, though, did you? No, we didn't. No, but... they went respectively to Cher and an American film about guns and hate. Y yes. Do you know Michael Keaton put on £20 to play that part? What a pro. Um... So, how are you liking the City of Angels? Uh, well, I'm enjoying the sun, but uh, I'm finding the whole Hollywood thing a bit superficial, I What's suppose. What's the matter? You've got a pool? Yeah, I know, but... I don't suppose you've got a pool at home in Daventry where you grew up and still live, for God's sake. Bit low budget round there. Like your films. Yeah, but you see, that's the Listen, whole point. Listen, mate, Judy Garland used to drink so much vodka that she'd do a shit on stage and still get a standing ovation. Now, if that isn't joys and pain, then Steven Spielberg hasn't got more screenwriters and you've got whippets. But what do you mean? I haven't even got any Let's whippets. Let's talk about your filmmaking process. Do you have a script or do you just make up some bollocks as you go along? Well, we use improvisation. Christ! Do you know how many rewrites Lost in Space got? Sixty! And the metal spiders only came in in the last two. Now, that's corporate genius and it was still shit. Match that, you little bastard. I'm sorry? How many horses died making your film? Um... It was none, wasn't it, Ron? It was none. Who are you meeting for brunch, Ron? Aaron Spelling and Sean Connery? Sybil Shepherd and William H. Macy at the H. Macy Ranch? I don't think so. It's more likely to be Alan Bennett and Nigel Hawthorne, for God's sake. What have you got against Alan and Nigel? Just one final question, Ron. It's a bit of a touchy error, I'm afraid. No, it's all right. Go ahead. Have you been invited to Jeff Goldblum's party tonight? No. Neither have I. Uh. Well, I am a Muslim now, and she's just got to learn to accept it. You see, this is what it's like. He comes home Friday night saying he's a Muslim, whatever, and I don't get no say in the matter. I've just got to lump it. I mean, it's Christmas in two weeks. He's not interested. He's taking a tree down. Well, that's up to you, isn't it? If you want to carry on... It's not on up to me. It is up to you. It is not up to me. It says it's up to me. It's not. It is up to her. I never said she had to be a Muslim, but it is my faith. And being married to an infidel obviously don't do me any favours in the eyes of Allah. But See, she doesn't seem to care, you know? He keeps giving me all this guilt about how he's going to go to hell, whatever they call it. I mean, what am I supposed to tell the kids? Tell them Daddy's a Muslim. And what would Madam like to drink? Don't! She's thinking. Sorry, but red or white, though? Oh, what are all these questions? What do you want from me? What are questions except things that demand answers? That is brilliant. Christ, you're fascinating. But red or white, though? Ah, three colours red, three colours white. It's all choices and films with me in them. What are you? Who are you? Where are you? She's there. Red, is it, then? I'll get red. You do realise that we can only ever be lovers, don't you? I'm too confused right now for friends or even acquaintances. You're so bloody enigmatic. Why are you what you're like? <laughs> do I excite you? I'll say. I suppose you want to make love to me right now. Now? Of course! Make love to me, wretch! Sit down. The world has intruded. We must never see each other again. Oh, go on. Oh, don't you see? You awful, adorable, brilliantly imbecilic man. It's not you, it's not me, it's not us, it's not even them, it's... I must go. Don't try to follow me, that would be boring. Don't worry, sir. She looked like a bit of a cow to me. Christ, you're wise! The trouble with him is, he's making it all up as he goes along. No, I ain't. All right, where in the coup round does it say you can go out and get pissed on lager every night? You show me. Well, he can't show me, can he? He hasn't got it. He's never even read it. She reckons I'm not supposed to drink. Which is, it's the first I've heard of it and I've looked into it. You have not looked into it? Of course I've looked into it. I mean, I'd hardly become a Muslim without looking into it. I'd be a twat. You are a twat, Gary. You don't think I'm a twat? I do. I think you're a twat and the kids think you're a twat.
News to me. Dad? Oh, God. Tempting, isn't it, darling? You scared the life out of me. All you have to do is put the lid on and call the undertaker. You're not dead. No, but I'm very comfy. I'm loath to move. Fine, stay put. I'll feed you your lunch while you're in there. See how you like it when it's full of crumbs. Think of me as a parcel. Just box me up and send me on my way. If anyone found out, I'd be in for a ten-stretch. Slip these babies to the pigs. Five hundred smackaroonies will buy you a lot of blind eyes. Burying you alive is absurd. Then bury me dead. Sheila Pope in the drawing room with the lead piping. Easy street. With the candlestick? Stop it. Stake through the heart. Pretend I'm a vampire. Dad, I'm starting to get cross. That's right. Get cross. Get murderously angry. So angry that you lash out. Oh! Go on, darling. Stop it. That's right. Here's the candlestick. Do your worst. I am going to get lunch. If you're really cross, you might want to use a drop of this. Did I just want... Silence, woman. See, this is how he talks now. That's how Muslims do talk. If you don't like how it... How do you he... know? You're supposed to be obedient and you're supposed to dress like a kind of undercover nun. Yeah, well, I'm not. Not for anyone. You see, she won't. She's fucking disobedient. And because of her, I'm going... Well, she's definitely going to hell. I'm probably going to have to go with her. Yeah, well, I'll take my chances. You see? She don't care about me or about the kids. It's the kids I feel sorry for. Yeah, they feel sorry for you and all. Well, where's the support? It's ridiculous. Where's the team? Well, where's backup? Look, I'm telling you, there's no one here. It's a shambles. Where's IT? There's no IT support at all. Oh, where's personnel? What's going on? How am I supposed to work? Where's design? Look, you bastards, I'm out here on my own, trying to cope, and there is no, literally, no support. I'm trying to cope. I mean, what? When? Where? Well, I'll believe it when I see it, Martin. Hello, Roger. Are you having a little poo? Yes, trying to. It's bad news, Roger. The worst there is. What is it? I've sold my soul to the devil. I've joined the army. I've opened the florists. I've steered the earth onto a crash course with the sun. Don't bother wiping your bum. It's an emergency. Anything goes. Sparky, why do you persist in making up these silly stories designed to make a fool of me and mess up my life? Hmm. Dr. Twinkie at the toy shop says it's because I've got a bad dose of nutty puppet mayhem. Shall I get the Totopoli out? Or shall we play swear word alphabet? When I took you in, we agreed that you wouldn't play any tricks on me, and yet that's all you seem to do. I know, Roger. And I'm sorry. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a lonely puppet whose mummy and daddy had died in horrid circumstances. His heart was breaking. Nobody loves me, he said. Whatever shall I do? Then, one day, a kind man happened by and listened to the puppet's story. It touched his heart, and he invited the little puppet to come and live with him and play hide-and-seek all day long. At last, the puppet had a home. More importantly, he had found a friend. The puppet was ever so grateful and vowed there and then that he would love the man forever. That puppet was me, Roger, and you were that man. How can we ever be parted? <laughs> Now, what we're doing here is we're staking out this pub because we think, right, you, you, you see that pub? Well, we know there are some organised criminals in there having a meeting. That's generally where they have the meetings, in a pub or a bar, not so much offices. Almost never. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say that we think, we think, that one of the criminals in there is a policeman if you can understand such a thing. You see, he's what's known as a bent copper. Now, what this means is not that he's a homosexual, uh, although he is, but don't worry about that. What it means is that he's not a policeman. He is a policeman. Well, yeah, he is a policeman, but what it means is that he is... Corrupt. Gay. 
Corrupt, yeah, he's corrupt. So, yeah, I was right the first time, he's not a policeman. Yes, he is. Well, yeah, Kevin, yes, he is a policeman, but he's also a criminal. Now, you know, the two just don't tessellate. Go. go. Yeah, they don't go. It's like chalk and... Cheese. Lager. Cheese. Chalk and cheese. So, all right, he's not a policeman, but he sort of is. He's sort of half and half, so... We'll probably let him off, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I've been trying to say. There's no one here. I mean, where's Alan? Where's Sales? Where's the Count? Yeah, I mean, what's going on here? Where's catering? I haven't had a coffee all day. Where's office furnishings? Where's fixtures and fittings? Where's my office? Where's my chair? <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, Martin, this whole end of the operation is just one mobile phone battery away from folding. And there's still no IT. I mean, what sort of a business is this? Try back up again. I'm telling you, something's gone terribly wrong. I mean, where, where's the heating? Where's the roof? I'm cold and it's starting to rain. Where's my job? Where's my dinner? I, look, I really think there's been a major breakdown in support. Where's my wife? Where, where's my company car? Where's my house? What's going on? Why did you send me here? Who are you, Martin? What do you want from me? Where's finance? Can you do those tricks like in that film where you throw bottles up in the air and catch them? Like in that film? The film Cocktail with Tom Cruise in it? Can I do that? Well, let's see, shall we? No. No, I can't. Again. Oh, all right. 